classic confrontation of the boxer Jason Rowland and the puncher John Thaxton. A great old-fashioned British clash which has had anger in the build-up, intense training reports from both camps and a fight that may well come down to who really wants it the most. Questions remain unanswered about how good each fighter is despite 17 years between them in the pro ranks. They've blown hot and cold and it's the most crucial night of their lives. Faxton the challenger in white, Roland the champion in claret and blue. Right hand early on from John Faxton. It was in this first round that Faxton knocked Paul Scrap Iron Ryan cold with one almighty left hook in this very arena. And it was also here that Jason Roland lost his unbeaten record from a right hand by Bernard Paul. So do not blink in this opener. Roland's a good boxer, a good thinker, but he seems prepared to stay in punching range here right away in the first round. His jab's been working well in the first minute, but he's taken a couple of right hands and he's taken a good left hook. But uh, he's decided he doesn't want to use the ring, he's prepared to stay in punching distance and just uh, keep a tight defence. Very skillful, Jason Roland. Groomed at the Repton Club. Slight swelling by the left eye of John Faxon early on. Great atmosphere here at the York Hall. We've been waiting for this all year. Roland's jab's been working well. Faxon's having slight problems getting past it. He's got past it a couple of times. But that's going to be his early problems, that jab. Looking for that left hook, Thaxton, but wild swinging with the right. And that's what he was like early doors against Emmanuel Burton, who eventually caught up with him in a shock defeat a couple of years ago. But Thaxton hasn't really recovered from yet. But this is the stage. Can he get it right tonight? This is shaping up even better than we anticipated. I'm surprised the fact that Roland's prepared to stay in punching range. This makes for a much better fight. I thought the first few rounds might have been a little bit of a chess match from Roland's, but not. he's right in there along with Faxton. He can hit, remember, Roland. He has got 13 knockouts in his 23 wins. Not just a boxer, but we just haven't seen enough of him really to know how good Roland is. like welterweight title fight here at the York Hall. Pretty even between Jason Roland and John Faxon in that opener. Yep, excellent first round. In the first minute or so, Faxon got through with some good right hands, a, a good left hook, and then uh, Roland's got behind the, the jab after that, but uh, fairly equal action. Maybe Roland slightly more punches, but the stronger punching coming from Faxon. John Faxon very quickly up off his stool for round two in the white. The 25-year-old from Norwich, recently married, childhood sweetheart Michaela, and has trained for this in the Canary Islands. Jason Rowland, the British light welterweight champion in the claret and blue of his beloved West Ham. Could have been a footballer, Rowland. Trained with Arsenal, Charlton and the Hammers, but chose boxing. But just hasn't had enough fights. Will the ring rust catch up with him? You can see already Thaxton realises it's close, it's difficult to get close to Roland without getting hit. So now he's he's stepping across, he's switching to South Point, he's trying a couple of things there just to find a way to get close and he's still struggling. The jab, he realised in the first round, is going to be the problem. He has to get past that jab. Good right hand. There's a switch hitter from Brendan Engel's stable, Thaxton. 
but he can be caught square on sometimes, can't he? See, the thing is, Roland, an excellent boxer, he is delighted having an opponent who's prepared to lead to him. Faxon has to lead to be effective, and that's shooting Roland down to the deck here. And his, his left jab, really, is timing it well here. Right hand from Roland was a good one. I think that was an unintentional clash there, but Richie Davis takes no nonsense in a fight like this that boiled up before the first bell. He's quite right to get right on top of the fighters. There's some real heated words in the build-up to this. Baxson fought a warm-up in August, and he said he was meant to be fighting Roland that night. Roland was on his stag night. Recently married his girlfriend, Carrie. Got two kids on his shorts, their names, Billy and Rosie. Says he needs money out of the game. And this is his stepping stone to a world fight. Faxon switching from orthodox to southpaw, back to southpaw at the moment. He's finding it difficult to get close. Roland's not running, but he's just taking a little half step back, trying to ram that countering jab into Faxon's face. It's been working well. Yes, he's got that reach, Jason Roland. Three inches taller. Jimmy Tibbs and Frank Black in his corner, encouraging him in with those nice moves as Faxon reverts to Southpaw. He's looking a bit puffy already, isn't he, John Faxton? Yeah, at the moment, Faxton is the one. I mean, I mean it's a fair leaving fight. They're both doing well, but Faxton is the one with the problems at the moment. That was a good round for Roland. Welcome back to Boxing's spiritual home, the York Hall. There's John Faxton with Brendan Ingle in his corner. Didn't have a good second round, did he? That wasn't a bad second round, but he's the one who has the problems at the moment. He's the one forcing the fight, so he's making the mistakes, and he got punished a couple of times because of that. But uh, Saxon has to keep doing this. He can't be discouraged, which we know he won't be anyway. He has to force it, but he has to find a way to get close without taking that jab in the way in. He's challenging tonight for Jason Rowland's British light -like welterweight title. Rowland's first defence won it in an upset over Mark Winters, and they're going at each other in the centre of the ring. This will suit Faxton. Faxton's burning up an awful lot of steam here in these exchanges. Roland a little bit more controlled. He's coming back at him, but he's more controlled. So over the 12 rounds, uh, if it goes as long as that, you, you wonder if that'll be significant. Uh, but Faxton put an awful lot of effort into these punches. Faxton known as a big puncher, but only eight knockouts on his record. Hasn't stopped anyone in the last four. But a good, good left, left hook there. Little cut on Faxon's forehead. But Ronan being caught round the left side of his face too. I don't know if that left hook has troubled Roland a little bit because he's been making mistakes since that punch landed. His next attack was sloppy and he's made a couple of uh, mistakes since. I wonder if that punch is just shaking him a little bit. The question mark over Jason Rowland was, has he become gun shy since Bernard Paul knocked him cold in this ring? And Faxton, we think, has the power to do the same, but a good combination from Rowland there. I tell you, Adam, there's no question about him being gun shy. The way he's prepared to stay in punching range against a dangerous opponent, no way. No doubt in my mind he's up for the job, but I think that left hook early in the round, it took him a few, a minute or so just to, to shake the effects of that, I think. Is it the right strategy to fight fire with fire, though? Yep, well, uh, Saxon throws wild swings, as he just seen just as I'm speaking. The worst thing you can do from that kind of fighter is sway back from them. Staying close, you're in less danger, especially if you're getting your own short straight punches home first. But the Saxon is just bullying his way into, the, into control in this round. Low blow, maybe, from Ronan. There's a cut on the forehead of Faxton. Quite bad. And Richie Davis is going to have a look at this. It's quite deep. And Brendan Ingle tends to it. How bad do you think it is? Well, judging with the amount of blood that came straight out of the cut, 
it looks to fairly serious. I'm trying to see the position. It seems to be in the middle of the forehead. So hopefully the cuts men in between rounds will be able to stem that because the last thing we want is he's a good fight like this ruin. Must have been a clash of heads. It's the type of cut that had to be a clash of heads. Nothing else would account for that type of injury. Brendan Ingle waving Baxton in. Doesn't look like it's in a serious place, but the more it bleeds, the worse it could get. And he's not a pretty sight at the moment, Faxton, as he tries to get back behind his jab. It's boiling up here at the York Hall. Let's have a look at the cut. It is on the forehead. Only Fossey in there with the swabs. Brendan and John Ingle, of course, in Faxon's corner. Let's see if it was a head clash. Well, it's certainly the type of cut you expect to come from a head clash, without a doubt. Yeah, unintentional. I mean, Faxon was just crouching down to, to, as though to, to, to block the, the, the body shot, the, the, the body shot counter and you was coming in. Definitely a clash, but an accidental one. But look at the blood straight away. Hopefully, they seem to have stopped the bleeding already. They've stopped treating the cut now. They've got the, the, the Vaseline on it already. I thought they'd be, they'd be treated right up to the bell. But uh, they've, they're happy they've stopped already. But you can see how quickly the blood was flowing from that. That's good news that it stopped, because this is turning into a cracker. Fourth round, British light welterweight title up for grabs. The champion, Jason Rowland, on the right of your screens and the claret and blue, but here comes John Faxon, the challenger. Maybe Brendan Ingalls told him to go for broke. Yeah, well, he saw the car. Oh, left hand! Right on the top of Rowland's head, and Rowland takes the count. First breakthrough for Jonathan Faxon. Goes for a right hand. Roland's dazed by that. Left hand from John Faxon again. Roland's legs do a little bit of a wobble. He clutches on. Richie Davis splits them up. He must tighten up. Uh, he can't punch back. His legs have gone. He can't get in the lead the gent. He's on punches. So he has to survive. He has to grab hold of Faxon. Just get the hands up, the chin down and get a minute behind him here until his head clears. That was the type of punch it takes a long time to clear from because it caught him high. The Ingle clan are waving Faxton in. Right hook. And the left. Faxton's lost some of the snap already. It's as though he's blowing from that big attack. But this early in the fight, he should have plenty left. Why has he dropped the face? He's got him again. The blood starts to flow from the head of John Faxon as he tries to wind up that left hook. Faxon has used a lot of steam up there. I was surprised that he had to drop the pace this early in the fight, but he's really blowing there. He is a fitness fanatic, and he's caught Roland just round the back of the head this time. The count is administered. It was the right hand that did it. Roland now for the second time here in round four. That wasn't as punishing as the first punch that scored the knockdown, but he's still in serious trouble. Faxon very wild, but it's paying off. It's the first time John Faxon has scored a knockdown in his last four fights. They're worried about the hand state of Faxon. He fractured both his hands a couple of years ago. They look to be OK here. Well, Roland looks to have recovered, his eyes are looking focused again. He's got the, the speed of it and his legs back again. He's dancing away from the punches. He's come back well, Roland. See, Faxon is blowing badly here. And surely the flow of blood will weaken him as well. I don't think that'll have any, any bearing on what's happening, but it's just the fact that he had to drop the pace after one big attack. He couldn't sustain it, but what a big round for Jonathan Faxton. Jason Rowland's got through it, but let's have a look at the knockdowns. Yep, 
the first punch, he, he'd actually taken a big shot just before that to the side of the head. One of those shots, it, it, it takes a bit of time. See that, it, just, it caught him high in the head. And sometimes that's the punches that take a long time uh, to, to get your head back together again. And, and that's exactly what happened. It took him some time. Just as he started to recover, he got caught behind the ear, knocked down again. Neither knocked down punch landed on his jaw. Both the head, one in the head, one behind the ear. Is a minute long enough to recover from those? Yeah, well, he looked, and you can see the way he finished around. He said, when you're in good condition too, and it's in the early stages of a fight, that was a clumping blow. That wasn't quite, didn't take so much to recover from. It was a kind of clumping blow behind the ear. But he seems to have recovered. Paxton are wondering about, is he blowing after those couple of big attacks? Fifth round here. And it's really brewing into a terrific domestic clash for the light welterweight crown. Paxson on the attack again in the white trunks, rather blood stained from that cut in the forehead that happened in round three. Roland comes back at him. Beautiful right hand. I mean, you have to hand it to Roland that the tactics here, his tactics are spot on. He's staying in punching range, using Saxon's own body weight as he comes forward to add to the power. That's a beautiful right-hand punch. Richie Davis says stop boxing. He's going to have another look at that head. Well, the, the, the worry may be here is not the fact that they haven't uh, the, the cut has got worse. The fact that they can't stop the bleeding might be the problem. They've got the doctor over, Jim. Oh, it's a deep cut on the forehead. One wonders what the doctor's going to say in that corner. It's over, and Jason Rowland retains his British light welterweight title. John Faxon, having floored Rowland twice in the previous round, loses because of the cut to the forehead caused by a head clash. What a shame. I tell you what, it's a great pity maybe for, for Faxon that we don't go to the scorecards here, Adam, because after such a big round with the two knockdowns, and that was definitely, without doubt, a clash of heads that cost the cut. So if one rules with an effect here, you could really have a big case for Faxton winning that fight. It had a massive round with the two knockdowns, and the fight was close up to that point, but uh, that's the way things happen here, I'm afraid. But they, they will, no doubt, organise a rematch here. The Board of Control will probably order a rematch. A rematch would be the only fair answer one would think. You have to feel sorry for the man from Norwich. His fans are silenced, and Jason Rowland having been out pretty much for the last year and a half, comes through his first defence. But only just. Ladies and gentlemen, after 40 seconds of round five, after consultation with the doctor, the referee has stopped the contest. John Thaxton has sustained a back cut to his forehead. The winner and still, like all the way Well, I'm delighted to say that throughout the arena here, Saxton receives sympathetic applause. But it's so hard on this young man, isn't it? This was his passport back into it tonight, back into the meaningful fights. And he's, in a sense, been denied that opportunity because of what appeared to be an accident. He'll surely come again. And it's Roland who is favoured by the turn of events here tonight. It could surely, surely have gone either way, but Jason Rowland at last makes a successful first defence of his British light welterweight title. And let's hope, on the basis of what we've seen tonight, that he does start to become a little bit busier. Between them, they provided a thriller there. They were made for each other style-wise, Barry, weren't they? Yeah, it, was, it turned out to be a better fight than I thought. I thought Roland would have boxed more and tried to move and, you know, circle the centre of the ring. But no, he, he got in, in, into a real fisty cuff. The two of them got together. And I hope there's going to be a rematch. And although it was a head clash, it was unintentional. He was going for a body shot. If we see it again at the end now when we go through, um, we, we'll actually see that he was reaching down and he landed a right hand after. It was unintentional. And, uh, you know, we need a rematch. That's simply what, what can solve the whole thing. Well, they're still side by side, and <laughs> they spent that long trying to get together. Maybe it's the start of something beautiful.
Adam Smith is going to have a word with both. Well, it was a big grudge match, and it was really hotting up there. I mean, first of all, it's a shame, isn't it, that it was stopped like that, Jason? It was, certainly was, yeah, it was. Yeah. I was just coming into it then. Just coming into it, yeah. I mean, you've been down twice in the yeah. previous round and hurt. Uh, yeah, the, the first time I was hurt more. Yeah, the second time, it wasn't too bad. I just, yeah, I did go over, yeah. You retained your title. Yeah, that's right. That was the, that's the important thing for you tonight. Of course, yeah. Of course it was, yeah. It's the first time in 18 months, I'm glad. Yeah, just hope, hope Frank gets some regular fights now for me, yeah. John, gutting. Can't believe it. Frank's not even bleeding. Oh, oh, wait, you know, had him down twice. I thought they could have let it go a little bit more. I had him, I had him still, but like I say, Jason kept getting up, but it's not a very good way to win, getting knocked down in the round before him and winning like that. It was it, a head clash, it, it, I felt but um, yeah, yeah, accidental. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah, we bumped heads, yeah, of course it was, yeah. I ain't got no nothing against him, that's right. You can have a quick look at it down here at ringside, Jason. Oh, yeah, good body shot and coming with you, John was there and, yeah. It's just, just one of them things, that's right. John, I can't believe it. I tried, I waited, I trained hard. Good luck to Jason, but we got, we got to do it again. We, but, you know, I just thank everyone for coming down, supporting me. But we've got to get a return, we've got to get a return. That's it, Frank, we've got to get a return. Well, let's bring Frank Warren in here. Sorry, Frank, if you can squeeze in. It's got to be a rematch, hasn't there? I'm sure. We'll sit both of the guys down and we'll talk about it and we'll get it on. And that's what we're looking for to do. I mean, Jason, it's only fair, isn't it? Oh, of course it is, yeah. I'll be, I've been waiting 18 months for a world title fight, so I'll have a world title fight, win that and defend against John. No, 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 no. no, no. I, want, I want the British title. I want to fight. I've been waiting 18 months as well. You know what I mean? Frank, Frank, we've got to have a rematch. We've got to do it in Norwich. It's got to be for the British title. Something out. Let's talk to you. you two guys. Get yourselves sorted, and I'm sure it'd be a great rematch. And we'll sort something out. Everybody wants it. The crowd want it. You guys want it. We'll get it done. Uh, well, thanks for the support. Everybody Both me well and John. Yeah. Well, well, well done tonight, Jason. It was an lucky finish, really. And John, I'm sure you'll be back. I can't believe it. Well, I'll be back. Like I say, fitter, stronger. Very lucky. I was coming into it. Well done. Cheers, guys. Well done. Thanks, guys.